What exactly is identity politics? Hey y'all, welcome to the vlog. So I've been away for a little for for a little while. I've been away. I was off all last week and I didn't make a video yesterday either. And so I'm really happy to be back here chatting with all of you. So I made myself some tea. So I'm gonna be drinking some tea. I'm gonna show you. Um, I got um, one of you. I feel so bad because I'm not sure who it was. Um, I got so many recommendations when I started doing teas. And uh, when I made my video about, I think it was the, yeah, tea pigs lazy days, and I talked about how I wasn't, like I didn't dig the packaging. And so um, I got some uh, recommendations for getting teas loose. So I went and I got some loose teas, and this is one of them. This is a cardamom chai, and that's what I'm having today. And it smells like cookies when I was a kid. I don't know, it just smells like cookies. Um, and I think maybe it's cardamom, one of those things that they use in some types of cookies. Anyway, so that's going on. Also, just in terms of you guys who are interested in what I was eating all of last week, I was pretty strictly fruits with some greens in, and yesterday was the first day that I kind of included some other things. So I had some sprouted um, garbanzo beans, and I made them into like basically a hummus, but I used this, um, I found some raw tahini. I'm really trying to stay raw. I will say we had a cast party for Ready, Set, Go Race, which I think I told folks on the live stream did very well. We sold out every show, so um, it looks like we're planning to remount that show in the fall. Very, very exciting news. Anyway, so um, we were at the cast party, and I had a veggie dog. Yeah, I had a veggie dog. Um, actually, I had two veggie dogs. Um, yeah, it got late at night, and we were just all hanging out, and, you know, we were chatting, and obviously, uh, you know, it was, a, you know, there were lots of foods made, but, you know, because I was there, they, you know, most of the food that was available was vegan, and so there were all these vegan, you know, alternatives to regular hot dogs and things like that, and there was a big plate of them at the end of the night, and I'm sitting there next to it, and so I just, you know, started grabbing and then, like, breaking pieces off, so I had two veggie dogs. Um, so not, I've, so not a hundred percent raw, but other than, the, other than that, I've been pretty raw. Um, and that was like the intro, the, the first non raw foods that I've had. And I was okay. Like yesterday was, you know, back to things as normal. I've also been treating myself to really good chocolate. I'm just a, I'm a big chocolate fan. I don't do really coffee or anything like that. And so I guess that's my, my caffeine addiction working itself out but yeah so that's it so things are still going uh well planning to get back to detroit y'all yeah so i have this pedagogy and theater of the oppressed conference which kicks off with a three-day pre-conference with julian bawal starting on may 30th through the first with a performance in the evening thursday uh, June 1st, and then the conference itself kicks off officially um, with that performance and continues through June 4th, so just a couple weeks away. So looking forward to that. And I was a little worried because I came to Brooklyn and didn't realize that my license expired. And so I'm here in Brooklyn and my Michigan driver's license expired. So I had to mail to get that, but it arrived yesterday. So I have, I have a driver's license so I can get back to, to Michigan. Um, yeah, so that's cool. So identity politics. Yes, last week I decided, there have just been so many conversations that I've been having, mostly around this whole idea of being, you know, an SJW or social justice warrior. And it appears to me that one of the main concerns that anti-SJWs have is that um, the social justice movement is really a struggle uh, by special interest groups to, you know, get power, to, to get a hold of power or to wrest power away from, from the folks who have it now. And I don't know how 
you know, that group, like if there is a group in power that's being identified in a particular way, I imagine that some people think of it as, you know, white men. But regardless of that, the the energy of the energy that seems to be driving the anti-justice movement is that there are these other groups that are using their marginal status as a way to have power basically given to them, to have the state you know, confer on them this power that they're going to then use what to oppress, you know, white people and men. I don't know how, I don't know what the equation is, but it seems to boil down to identity politics. And that seems to be the main, um, the main criticism uh, is that the SJWs are really just a form of identity politics. And so I thought maybe it was time to spend some time talking about uh, identity politics and what that means. So uh, before jumping, diving right into identity politics, I thought I'd spend some time just talking about politics in general. Um, and this idea of politics, at least in our modern sense, being born out of a, tr a tradition that had less to do with uh, rights being conferred on the citizens of any particular nation, but really looking at uh, the control of the you know general public, how to con how to maintain power over the general pop populace, and we're talking about many of these major nations being you know monarchies, and those monarchs needing to surround themselves with the advisors that would help them to do what was necessary to maintain power, and a lot of that was about you know military might, uh, and a lot of these you know the the the, the nations, the first world nations, the, the nations that we think of as being, you know, mighty world nations, you know, got their power through, you know, military, you know, through their, you know, military advancements, right, from being advanced as militaries. <laughs> I don't know how to, but to, you know, you get that, right? So it was, there was a violent component to it. And so these nations came up from, you know, fighting with each other, fighting others, going into places and using violence to take from other peoples around the world, right? So that happens. And politics was really the way that once that power was achieved, that that power was maintained. And I'm being very simplistic about this, but I just want to sort of like kind of create a sense of what we're talking about as the, you know, development of our modern politics. And, you know, I could go into far more details, I'm sure, but you guys would be happy to, <laughs> you guys will be happy to challenge whatever I say. So I open it up. I open this, you know, discussion up to, you know, to all, to everyone. Right. But that's my understanding of how politics generally developed and that was you know we had these nation states coming up and we needed to control the populations and usually it was a small group seeking to control a minority and mostly so that they could hold on to their wealth right their wealth and their privileges and so we get to you know i'm going to talk spend you know a fair amount of time talking about the u.s because that's the experience that i'm living as a as a u.s citizen so we get to the U.S. where um, you have Europeans showing up in, you know, the place that they called the Americas and establishing colonies and that being done as a as a means of extracting wealth for, you know, the, the English crown and for other European nations. And um, you had wealthy land owners or the, the ruling class in, in the U.S seeking to you know maintain their wealth and they wanted to have certain controls over their estates and uh, eventually we have a constitution that is drafted in order to help those few privileged individuals who just happen to be you know men who happen to be you know white um so that they would be able to exercise their freedoms as this new, you know, ruling elite in their own country. They weren't necessarily thinking about people who did not have uh, property. They weren't necessarily thinking about women and they weren't thinking about, you know, people who were the slaves at the time. So Africans, right, who were slaves. And they weren't thinking about the Native Americans who had been here and who had been, you know, conquered for all intents and purposes. 
So, um, so when we talk about politics, generally speaking, we're talking about a politics that is intended to protect a group based on a particular identity. So, and when we were protecting the identity of the monarch who was ruling, was, you know, who was uh, entitled to rule by divinity, we were still talking about identity. So when we talk about identity politics in the modern sense, I believe we are talking about groups who feel that for one reason or other, because of their identity, they are not receiving the entitlements of the rest of the citizens where they, where they live in their country, in this case, in the United States. And this has likely been a struggle since the founding of this country, since the, since the, you know, the, 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 the Virginia charter, right? When we had people who were brought over to serve as labor, um, they had to struggle for their rights. Um, and their, you know, the, the identifier at the time would have been, you know, the, you know, the labor class or the, you know, the poor, but that's certainly an identity. Um, but in our modern sense, when we talk about marginalized groups, we're likely talking about people of color. We're likely talking about women. We're likely talking about members of the LG, uh, LGBTQIA plus community, uh, people who are perhaps marginalized because of their religion. Um, and we even have people, um, you know, considering themselves marginalized for being white. Uh, you have people considering themselves marginalized for having certain political views that don't necessarily fit in with the mainstream. And so I think that we have to, once uh, a group has identified themselves as being targeted in some way because of their identity, we get into identity politics. And it seems that that is an idea that's embraced across the board, but it's really only when certain groups assert themselves that identity politics becomes a problem. At, or at least it seems that way. And so over the, you know, over the, this next week, I want to look at the ways that identity politics have been accepted in the mainstream and or not accepted in the mainstream, depending on who it was. Um, you know, I want to talk a little bit more about, you know, the, how identity and identity politics was coined and, that, and, and, and most people agree that really identity politics emerged as a, as a, as a concept strongly in the seventies. Um, I'd like to also talk about the ways that groups who, uh, traditionally may be seen as oppressive groups like, you know, let's say racist, let's say Nazis, um, um, are beginning to develop, you know, an identity as a marginalized group in and of themselves and how that group now is really vying for a platform to be heard and whether or not the rest of society you know, owes it to them, owes to them the same, uh, the same, you know, rights or courtesies that are afforded to anyone else who feels that they're margin marginalized and wants to, you know, voice their experience. So those are things that, um, yeah, those are things that I want to get into. I also want to share with you some more. I'm not done with the page to stage. There's so much more video that I have for you. There was a complete video made of the show, which I think is going to be made available on the Falconworks website, likely through a Patreon that Falconworks will set up. Um, and then um, I also want to share with you, you know, links to some of the feature. There was a feature that Brick TV made, and you know, I also have you know, stuff that I, you know, video that I took. So that's all stuff that you can look forward now that I'm back over the coming week. 
Um, there's a show called Three Fifths. I want you guys to look it up. It's called Three Fifths, or um, I believe White Supremacy Land is like the subtitle of the show. And I'm going to see that. And so I will be um, reviewing that show and talking to you guys about that likely in my next video. But for now, that's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourself. Peace. And I love myself.